Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I wanted to give you some of the basics that you need to know in order to become a blockchain developer. And I wanna answer you know, some common questions that I get, because a lot of you email me and say, you know, where do I get started? How do I get started? What are the things that I need to know? And I wanted to kind of make this video to address some of those uh, questions, but also give you a framework about how to think about them and how to kind of continue forward and make progress and, you know, becoming a blockchain developer. So before I start explaining all of that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. That really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to become blockchain developers because that's what we need. We need more people to know how to do this in order to build the technology and push this space forward in order to get mass adoption. Okay, so let's think about some of the questions um, that I get. You know, whenever you come to the blockchain space, you're gonna be inundated by um, all kinds of new terminology that you don't understand, like consensus algorithm, uh, like new languages, like solidity, um, gas, how does a blockchain work? What is a DAP, what is a smart contract? And those are all really intimidating things if you've never had to deal with them before. So how do you learn that, right? So there's two kinds of knowledge you need. You need conceptual knowledge of the thing itself, you know, kind of just generally high level, what is it? But you also need a functional knowledge uh, about how to use the things in order to actually build the technology. Because, I mean, you know, I'm assuming you're a programmer and you want to, you know, learn how to, be proficient with these things. So um, let's kind of talk about that. So, you know, from my perspective, learning by doing is the most efficient way to learn any skill. Um, the end result is to be able to do the skill. So probably the best, most efficient way is to learn the skill itself and sort of run into walls. And as you approach those things, you will have a better context to actually, you know, understand the bigger concepts themselves, right? In order to do that, you know, you need a basic idea of some of the concepts that are out there. It's probably helpful for you to know the concepts you'll encounter. So let's kind of like talk about that and talk about, you know, what this looks like. So let's take an example. Um, it's, I think it's easy, I think it's really good to start uh, at a really basic level. Like what is a blockchain, what is it used for? Um, and we'll take Ethereum for example, because that's what I talk about mostly on this channel. Um, the really basic use case for Ethereum, just like Bitcoin, is to you know keep a ledger of value, to keep you know a distributed ledger that you own X amount of you know cryptocurrency, you know native cryptocurrency, Ether, Ethereum, and I own X amount, right? And I just want to send you. Um, Ether from my account to yours, right? So that one problem alone, if you can do that with code, will illuminate so many concepts. Let's we'll kind of break it down and think about all the things you need to know in order to do that. You need to know like what an account is on the blockchain. You need to know like what an address, you know, is like a public key and a private key. You would need to know. Um, that like ether even exists, that it's a, it's a currency that's backed with a blockchain. And you would need to actually know the, how to send ether from one account to another with code. And that would introduce you to a really basic concept of a transaction, which is, you know, kind of one of the fundamental records that, you know, Ethereum backs in its sort of quote unquote distributed database. Um, you know, anytime you're triggering a right to the blockchain, you're creating a transaction. Whether you're sending Ether to somebody else, you're creating a smart contract, you're writing a, to a smart contract. Um, yeah, so if you learn with code just how to send Ether from one account to another, that's going to give you the conceptual knowledge of so many other types of things. Now you need to lean into that, those concepts, in order, order to understand them more fully. But just doing that alone is going to give you a more efficient way to learn about those kinds of things. 
So where would you get started? Like, how would you do that? Well, um, so I have a series on my channel that I created that also has an accompanying article. Um, this is for, you know, Web3.js. And the whole idea behind this series was to strip away the application and just go to, you know, JavaScript and say, how can we interact with Ethereum, right? How can, um, you know, I just send Ether from one account to another with uh, just JavaScript? And what that does is it takes away all the hard part of building out an application and kind of gives you a sandbox to play in in order to, you know, get your hands on these concepts themselves and, and sort of wrap your mind around them without being overwhelmed about actually, you know, building an app. So check out this series in this article if you haven't already. Um, that's just sort of how that works. So, um, you know, in this series I go more and more in depth. So if you start there, it's sort of just like, if you've ever seen um, any of these other like sort of code challenges that teach you, uh, or they call katas, I think, that teach you from, uh, you start with a really beginner level and it takes you all the way to a really advanced level. That's kind of what I try to do with this series, um, it, but it's topical. You can just kind of watch one video and jump to the next one. You don't have to necessarily work your way through. But that will give you a framework for like just saying, okay, how do I send Ether? This is how I do it, right? But that, then that gets you to more complex ways of, uh, you know, creating transactions, like deploying smart contracts, actually building the Ethereum transaction that does it. And, you know, some people say, like, well, why do you need to learn how to do that with Web3.js? Like, well, you may not need to in a real life setting, but this does show you the inside of how that works and gives you that conceptual knowledge that will teach you more things about how the blockchain works and how, you know, you can actually you know, create things for the blockchain. It's going to make you a much better programmer rather than if you're just using libraries and, and tools without having to think about them all the time. So let's look at another uh, kind of way to answer some of these questions, right? Oh, I also forgot to mention, um, it, this series talks a lot about gas too, which is a big concept that people are unfamiliar with. It's like, how, how do I think about gas as a programmer? Well, that series will answer some of those questions as well. In addition to this, I think I have a conceptual video, yeah, a, a concept video on gas and how that works. So you can check out that if you haven't already. Um, so, you know, once you sort of get some of those basics down about like, how does a blockchain work? How do I just send things back and forth? How do I talk to it? I guess the next step is to like think about, you know, how do I write code that runs on the blockchain? And then how do I, you know, create, you know, some other app that talks to that code or consumes the data from that, you know, application, um, things like that. So that's where you would uh, learn a lot about, you know, how code gets executed on the blockchain and how you can talk to the blockchain to, you know, use that code. And I think the best way to do that is just by building an app. And that's why I created um, sort of this sorry, I guess the wrong video here. Uh, this first, this big tutorial that's pretty popular that a lot of people like, um, this is sort of step-by-step -step full stack tutorial where I teach you how to build a voting application. And the reason I think it's a great idea to start with an application without having full knowledge of the languages themselves is that you learn the features of the language as you go. And you learn the features of the blockchain and the features of the ecosystem as a whole as you go. And that's like I said, it's more efficient. It's more efficient to learn that way rather than just learn how to about all the concepts for days or weeks or months or years and then go try to do them. It's just not very efficient. And so this is, I think, a better way to do this kind of stuff. So check out this article if you haven't already. Um, this is a two-hour tutorial and uh, you know, a pretty lengthy article that goes through some concepts. And so when you do a tutorial like that, it teaches you how to get started with Solidity, which is you know, the programming language that's used to writ, write Ethereum smart contracts. It shows you like what a smart contract even is and how it works. And you know, when you deploy the smart contract to the blockchain, it teaches you how the smart contracts work on the blockchain. And eventually you have to learn how to like, you know, build a client side app that uh, you know, talks to those smart contracts. So then you're 
have to answer the question like, how do I write something that, you know, triggers transactions in the blockchain? How do I consume data from the blockchain? So by doing a tutorial like this, you get all of that knowledge without having to address the individual concepts step by step by step by step. So check out that one if you haven't already. And the other thing similar to this tutorial is, you know, uh, this other tutorial that's pretty popular where I teach you how to build your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum and build your own ICO. This is called Code Your Own Cryptocurrency on Ethereum. This is an eight-hour tutorial that has, you know, a uh, step-by-step um, article as well. That article answers some other, and that tutorial answers some other questions that um, the first application doesn't, which is it teaches you about tokens, which is a big deal with blockchain. You know, part of this whole blockchain revolution is that people want to tokenize things. They want to use tokens inside of applications and they want to, you know, it's, that's, a, that's a big theme of becoming a blockchain developer is knowing how tokens work. So this, you know, accomplishes a lot of purposes. It teaches you, you know, if you wanted to build an ICO, you could, you could do it. It gives you the starting point. And I have another series on my channel where I show you how to build like a bigger, kind of like more production ready ICO. You can check that out too. It's called real world ICO. Um, or you can just like, you know, look at this. So it teaches you about tokens. It teaches you like that tokens are different from Ether, you know, Ethereum's native cryptocurrency. Sometimes people, um, you know, don't know that initially. Um, it shows you, and this is the other thing I really like about it. Um, a crowd sale is a very kind of finite problem and tokens are a very finite thing. And I'll explain what I mean by that. You know, an ERC20 token is a standard, like it's set to a certain set of rules and behavior. And so that's a really good way actually for you to learn the basics of a programming language like Solidity is to build something that has very specific requirements instead of just kind of being anxious about, you know, what are the kinds of things that I can build and I'm gonna to try to go off into the weeds and, and build something and I'm not really sure how it's gonna work. That's one way to do it and that's actually good, but it's also good to have, you know, a very strict set of rules that you have to build something by and that's exactly what an ERC20 token is. And that's what I do in this tutorial is I teach you how to build it step by step and by doing that, that actually teaches you to learn Solidity better. All right, so the last thing that I wanna talk about is just sort of like resources, about how to get started. And that's actually what I created this other um, you know, article for, which is the Complete Blockchain Developer Resource List, which is gonna show you everything that you need in order to get started as a blockchain developer. It's going to show you, you know, developer tools, ecosystem tools, um, blogs, podcasts, DAP discovery tools, Ethereum browsers and wallets, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, you can just look on this website. It's chock full of information. So uh, head on over to dappuniversity.com and check out the articles um, in order to yeah see that. All right, guys. So I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm going to close out the video there today. If you, there's any questions that I didn't answer that you want to know, um, feel free to email me over at gregory at dappuniversity.com. Um, I'll, I try to take a look at everything that comes in. My inbox is pretty busy. I don't always have time to give thorough and detailed responses, but I'll at least know, um, kind of what your guys are struggling with. So, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the like button down below. Like I said, that really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to do this. Um, because if more people learn how to do it, that helps everyone. So, yeah, I'm going to call the video there today, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University. Mm -hmm.